Let's build the kingdom of God together. Partner with us and support our projects throughout the Middle East, digging water wells, building orphanages, and conducting revival meetings to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries and join our Kingdom Builders program today. Celebrate Freedom Ministries have been called by God to raise disciples who will make a difference in the kingdom. Disciples who will preach the gospel, heal the sick, and raise the dead. If you desire to be personally discipled, we invite you to join our partners program and begin to fulfill. Celebrate Freedom Ministries have been called by God to raise disciples who will make a difference in the kingdom. Disciples who will preach the gospel, heal the sick, and raise the dead. If you desire to be personally discipled, we invite you to join our partners program and begin to fulfill your God-given calling and purpose. To join the partners program, visit our website, Celebrate Freedom Ministries, and join our partners program today. Mina and Yvonne have been called to bring God's transformative love to this generation. They have been powerfully used by God to preach the gospel to nations with the manifestations of signs, wonders, and glorious healings. You can be a part of what God is doing. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries. I am muted. <laughs> Blessings, everyone. So good to have you connecting. This is going to be such a special, special topic. And there's a reason that we're doing this topic. But I first want to say welcome. There's so many wonderful people connecting. Thank you for all the love hearts, the welcome messages. There's so many people and I can see all of your messages. So I just want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. Tonight is going to be so amazing. Uh, we're going to be speaking about a very sensitive topic. For those of you um, that know us, we've been in the healing ministry for over 12 years now. And we know that it's the heart of God to heal his people, to save and to deliver. But at the same time, due to a lot of wrong thinking patterns and a lot of um, theology that we have just inherited, learned um, throughout the years, we come to believe, like, does God really want to heal me? And the problem is we have two major issues that I'm going to cover one today and hopefully one next week. But the first question we get asked is how about Job? Job was a righteous man. He loved God. Um, he always offered sacrifices. He didn't want to do the wrong thing. So why did God allow Satan or permit Satan to try and afflict Job with all these boils, all these diseases? And so a lot of the time, many believers will come and say, maybe it's because God was testing Job's integrity. So God is using sickness and disease to test my integrity. And so therefore, I don't want to get healed because I really want to pass the test and show God that I'm someone who is full of integrity. Now, that understanding of the book of Job, well, it got so many people to embrace their sickness and to embrace their disease. And so it's very hard for them to receive healing because there's a blockage. And so we're going to go through that. So I want to, I'm going to start with prayer 
I'm going to ask you to help me do a couple of things to share the stream. Um, make sure you are subscribed to the channel if you're just flicking through. And this video came up, so subscribe so you don't miss any of our live teachings. Um, there's also a healing service um, on February 20th. So you can um, head to the website or celebrate food and ministries.org and register for this upcoming healing service. Um, this is a free service, so but you do need to register because we need to know who is coming. Um, so I guess that's it for the announcements. Let me start with prayer. If you have questions, as I am teaching, if you have questions, type them up in the chat. If you've struggled with the book of Job, um, if you've struggled to understand um, hard verses, type them up in the chat and we're going to try and answer as many questions as we possibly can. So wherever you are, just lift up your hands to the Lord and just begin to invite the presence of God. Just begin to say, Holy Spirit, come and help me understand. Give me eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I want you to say, Lord, I come to you right now and I thank you because you are the God who is my healer. And I thank you, Lord, because tonight is a night of miracles. I am receiving my miracle tonight. You are touching my body tonight. Tonight is my day. And I just thank you, Father, for allowing me to hear this teaching right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, even God, from the beginning of this teaching, I take authority over sickness and disease. And I just thank you. I bind sickness and disease, every spirit of infirmity. And I thank you because you are the God who is our healer. This is your heart and this is your will. So Holy Spirit, come and do what you do best. Come and heal bodies. Come and heal minds and heal hearts. Break addiction in the name of Jesus and let your presence be felt. I thank you and I give you all the glory and all of God's people said, amen and amen and amen. Well, let's get started into this topic. So the, the book of Job for so many people um, is one of the oldest book, books in the Bible. Um, the book of Job has been misunderstood and misused for many, many years. Um, so many people believe that God manipulated, that Satan manipulated the heart of God to afflict Job and to test so that God can test his integrity. Others believe that Satan was the one who actually afflicted Job. But God allowed it. In other words, God permitted this to happen. And so obviously that doesn't sit well with the rest of the story of scripture. There's something here that is out of line. So we really want to get into the text. And I'm going to try to share my screen. Let's see how that happens. Here we go. And I'm going to read this with you because I know that this is recorded on the channel. I know that many of you may need to go back and may need to read it once and twice. So I want it to be there in front of you. But in the book of Job, let's look together at the problematic passage so that we can understand. It says this in Job chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came along with them. Now, I don't understand how that can be, but let's keep on reading. And the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from or where do you come from? Now, notice that the Lord is the one who actually starts the conversation or picks up the conversation. And so Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, here we go. This is God elevating his servant Job. This is God starting the conversation. Have you considered my servant Job? 
that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. And so we get to see that at the beginning of the conversation, it is actually God who is elevating Job. God knows that Satan wanted to afflict Job. God knows where Satan came from. So God is the one who's telling him, how awesome is my servant Job? Well, if we keep on reading, it says this. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. In other words, Satan is telling um, God, look at how much you blessed him. Look at all the blessings. In other words, he's saying, God, people don't really, um, people need you. They don't want you. Look at how much you have blessed him. Of course, he's going to be nice to you. Um, and so he goes like this. But now this is Satan telling God, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. And he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. Now, this is very problematic because most people understand this as Satan literally received a permission slip from God to afflict us as his people. So do we really think that Satan goes to heaven every day collecting permission slips so that he, do you think he needs that permission to afflict you? He already killed, Jesus said that he kills and steals and destroys. And so Satan doesn't really do that. Therefore, there's something completely wrong in the way that we need to understand this passage. And so what we really need to understand is go back to basics. There's basic things that we need to understand. Let me get this screen off and then I'll get it back on later. The first thing that we need to understand is that 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8, it says, be alert and sober because your enemy prowls around like a roaring lion trying to devour anyone. So what God is saying or what this verse is saying is that this is the nature and the character of Satan. But what we really need to understand is a little bit to go back a little bit, because during that time, the time where Job lived, the covenant at the time was called the covenant of sin and death. In other words, you sin, you die. It's not like in the new covenant when we have a redeemer who paid the price of sin and therefore we can receive our healing. So the time is actually called, uh, the covenant is actually called the covenant of sin and death. The other thing which is very, very important to remember is we think that God gave Satan permission. In other words, God literally handed Job over. He said to Job that, uh, he said to Satan, Job is in your power. Just go and do whatever. So it sounds heartless and it sounds like God literally handed over Job, his beloved servant, to Satan. But what we need to understand is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 4. Let me see if I can, if I can actually put it up on the screen. Um, if uh, It's not coming up. Okay, that's fine. So 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says this. It says that Satan is the God 
of this world. What does that mean? It means that during the time where the covenant of sin and death was active, the God of this world was actually Satan. So that really means that Satan, everything was under Satan's power, not under God's power. And you're like, what did you just say? Are you sure of what you're saying? Let me tell you why this is true. Because in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted, part of his or part of the temptation is that we are told this, that the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him everything, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in that just moment, in the moment, and said to him, all authority I will give to you if you worship me. For it has, this is the Satan telling Jesus that all the kingdoms of the earth has been delivered unto me and I give it to whoever I please. What does that mean? What is Satan talking about? When was all the kingdoms of the earth actually delivered into the hands of Satan? We go and the answer to this question is in the book of Revelation, uh, of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 26, we get to see that when God created man, God gave Adam and Eve authority and dominion over everything. But when sin entered the world, they lost their authority to Satan. So with this very powerful understanding, we then go back to this very same passage where God is saying to Satan that Job is under your power. Go and do what you're going to do. What is God saying? That you know that I cannot curse him because I'm not going to curse what I blessed Satan already said to God, you blessed him. Look at how much have you blessed him. Well, we know from the book of Numbers that God never curses what he blesses. That's number one. Remember when God's people were walking through to get to the promised land and we get to see that the king of, um, of Balaam, he saw the, the God's people and he brought this false prophet and he said to, to Balaam, I want you to curse those people. And so the prophet said to him, this false prophet said to him, I cannot curse those people because they are blessed. So we get to see that God never curses what he blesses. And God never hands over his beloved or his servant to the devil. The time where this incident took place, Satan was the one whom Job was under. He was the God of this world. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 says that he is the prince of the air. And so we get to know from Luke chapter 4 that Satan himself says that all these kingdoms have been delivered unto me. In other words, Adam when he sinned, lost his authority. And so I now became the God of this world. So with this understanding, who was the one in charge of Job at the time? It wasn't God. It was actually Satan. So when we go back and read this, God is not giving Satan a permission slip to go out and to afflict his beloved. He's not doing that. He's simply telling Satan that he is under your power. You are the one who kills 
and steals and destroys. I don't do that. You are the one who goes and curses. I don't do that. But since it's the time of this covenant, the covenant of sin and death, and since you are the God of this world, because redemption has not yet happened through the cross of Jesus Christ, what he's saying to him is that Job is actually under you. And so we get to understand that God is not giving Satan a permission to go and to afflict his beloved. The thing is, let's see what actually happens after that. After that, it's actually terrible because when this happened, it says here, then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And this is where people think, okay, he's giving him a permission slip. But look at what happens after that. It says, now when Satan left the presence of God, who is the one who's actually afflicting Job? This clearly tells us. It says, now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabaeans, um, traders came and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword. Who provoked those nations or the Sabaeans to do that? And then the messenger says this, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. Was it really the fire of God? Did God send his fire and did this destruction? Or was it Satan who was the God of this world who went out of the presence of God and went out to fully destroy Job? The next one says, while he was still speaking, another came and said to him, the Chaldeans formed three bands, um, raided the camels and took them down. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone escaped. And so it keeps on going. And the next one actually tells him that while he was still speaking, Wind came, destroyed the house, and all his sons and daughters collapsed and died. Who did all that? Did God do all that? Or was it Satan who went out from the presence of God and did all that? I guess most people agree it was Satan. But they think that God gave Satan permission. In other words, Satan went into heaven, got a permission slip, and just gave it. But that's not what happened. What really actually happened is that because of the covenant that was there at the time, and because the world was handed over to Satan, Job was actually under Satan's control, not God at this time. But God would never curse what he blessed and would never hand his beloved to, this, to Satan to harm him. Well, the story continues. And at this time, let me tell you something. What is Job thinking? Job's thinking this has to be God. God is after me. And he's probably thinking maybe God just wants to test my integrity. Maybe God just wants to teach me something. Maybe God, and, and so he doesn't know what to do. And so in Job chapter 1 and verses 20, it says, At this Job got up and tore his robe, shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said this, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the Lord's name be blessed. Now, later on, if you're following, Job gets to repent from all these words. Yet even until today, we still see believers singing this. 
So many believe a singer song. The Lord, it says that God, you're very, um, you, you, you give, but you're quick to take away. Therefore, we will not set our hearts on what you give. These are actually songs that people sing until today. In funerals, you get to hear that. Let me tell you, you're trying to tell me that if you tell a mother, God took your child because he has a greater need for him in heaven. How will this mother ever become intimate with God? When it's a graduation day and all his friends are graduating on the stage and she had just buried her son, you're trying to tell me that she's just going to do what? Do what? What is she going to do? She's going to do like what Job did. She will worship God, but she will begin to believe that God was the one who went out. He is after my son. And at this time, Job is so confused. The Bible says this in, um, it says that he, he, in Job 13, verses 15 to 16, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. In other words, he thinks that God was the one who went out to slay him. He even said that he is the one who breaks me on every side. Job is so broken. Job doesn't know why would God do that, especially at the beginning of the chapter when the Bible says that God already knows he was upright. He was blameless. He was offering to God all the time. He was worshiping God. He was the priest of his house. He constantly offered sacrifices unto God. So why would God go out after me and just destroy my life? Let me tell you, it's very hard for so many people to comprehend this. So they just live with this pain. They live with it and they don't understand. And so even when people get sick, it's the same thing. Maybe God wants to teach me something. Maybe God wants to test my integrity. Maybe God, maybe God. But the thing is, we get to see that Job has three friends. At the start, they're very quiet. Um, they don't say anything but then they shift from comfort to blame. How many people do you have friends in your life like this? And they will tell you what's happening. You know why you lost your business? You know why you lost your house? You know, because there has to be sin in your life. And they began to hurt Job. And so many people, you could be in the same position with those who are around you. They are constantly blaming you. It's like, oh, it's wrong decisions that you've done. And that's why you are where you are today. There has to be something. His friend said to him, God doesn't just go out and destroy someone's life for nothing. There's a reason, Job, as to why your life has been destroyed by God. The story continues and it gets harder and harder because in Job chapter 2, we get to see the second episode. And it says this, then the Lord said to Satan again, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him. He is blameless and upright. A man who fears God and shuns evil. And he still maintains his integrity Though you enticed me against him to ruin him without reason. Now, this is such a problematic verse. And this has hurt so much people in their theology. Because many people actually believe that what this is saying is that God is saying to Satan, you enticed me to go out after Job and to destroy his life with for no reason. Now, this is very problematic because we know that if this happens even here on earth, this person, if someone chooses to go out after someone and destroy their life with no reason, does that make sense to anyone? The, that doesn't make sense. So the, we need to dig deeper and actually understand what he is saying. The word entice means to turn against. Can Satan change the heart of God? God who, is, who was revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Can Satan actually change, change his heart towards us? There is absolutely no way. So therefore, we need to go back and really study what this word means and what is God actually saying. 
And so this is what God's saying. Have you considered Job who still holds fast to his integrity? Though you made him believe that I have turned against him and that I have destroyed what I blessed. I'm going to read that again because I know it's so deep. This is what God's saying. Have you considered my servant Job? who still holds fast to his integrity, though you made him believe in his mind that I was against him and I went out to destroy him for no reason. In other words, God is the one who picks the conversation. God is the one who elevates his beloved Job. God is the one who is telling Satan, do you see how good he is? Although you made him believe that I was against him for absolutely no reason, he still maintains his integrity. He is not saying that you made me so angry against Job and I just went out and I just destroyed him for no reason. He's not saying that. He is saying you made him believe in his mind that I was against him. And even though you did that, he still maintains his integrity. And we get to see that Satan says to God, skin for skin. A man will give all he has in his life. Stretch out your hands and strike his flesh and bones. And see, this tells you what Satan does. He is the one who strikes your flesh. He's the one who strikes your bones. He's the one who strikes your children. He's the one who comes to kill and to steal and to destroy. He is this. It is not God. And we have confused those verses and we would go and teach them. And we would believe that it was actually God who permitted Satan to go out and destroy his beloved. I believe that so many of us, we're going to have to or we're going to need to repent because this is, this is life-changing teaching. When I begin to understand that there is no way God can do that. I have two children. And if anyone touches, how can I would be an insane woman if someone came and enticed a mother or a father to go out and destroy their own child. I would be behind bars. If this is the way we think on earth, how much more loving is God? How much more compassionate is God? So there is no way that Satan enticed God to go out and to destroy Job, his beloved, for no reason. There's no way. What this is saying, and I'm going to repeat that for the third time, God is saying you made him believe in his mind that I was against him for no reason. And you get to see that this is truly what happened because Job fully believed that it was God who was against him. His wife fully believed that it was God. His wife said to him, curse God and die. That's what his wife said. His, his friend said to him, oh, there has to be sin in your life. There has to be a hidden sin. And today we hurt so many people when we come and say, oh, you're not healed because there has to be sin in your life. Or we come and say, oh, God is trying to teach you something with this sickness. And we need to stop and we need to repent because this is not the heart of God. The heart of God is completely and totally different. The Bible says, so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. This is Job chapter 2 verses 7. And afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. And so Satan went out and he just afflicted this man whom God loved very much. And this same evil spirit is still active today. And rather than us coming into agreement and understanding something that we are no longer under the covenant of sin and death. In actual fact, Romans 8 said that the spirit which gives life cancels the spirit of sin and death. 
The Holy Spirit gives life. We are under a better covenant. In this new covenant, Jesus himself paid the ultimate price for you to receive your healing. And so we need to understand that this is not a theology that we need to embrace. The other important thing is that Job was not under or wasn't even part of the covenant of Israel. So he wasn't an Israelite. He was from the land of Uz, uh, Uz. And that land is part of current or modern day Saudi. In other words, he was not even under the covenant. This story specifically was before Moses' time and before God's law. So you really get to see that you're speaking about a story that was earliest in the Bible, earliest book to be written. He is under the covenant of sin and death. He is not part of the covenant of Israel or God's people. That's number three. And even with all that, he kept his integrity. One of my favorite verses is when he said, my Redeemer lives. Isn't that beautiful? If Job under an old covenant, the covenant of sin and death goes out to say, my Redeemer lives, how much more do we as believers in the new covenant are meant to stand and say, Jesus, my Redeemer lives. And because he lives, I live. Because he lives, I can receive healing in my body. Because he lives, I can receive deliverance because he lives rather than saying oh well look at you know God just handed him to Satan and Satan went out and literally ruined his life ruined his business as I'm speaking to you right now I am feeling that there's so many people and I'm gonna tell you how he was restored but so many people you're watching me right now and the enemy has gone out strong after you the enemy has gone out to destroy your business to destroy your marriage, to destroy your children. And a lot of the time, we you didn't know how to stand against that storm. And you're just helpless thinking, the Lord took, the Lord gave, let his name be blessed. Or you might be saying, Lord, you allowed it. You allowed my business to go down. You allowed my husband to walk out on me or cheat with me with another woman. You allowed my son. And I am telling you, before I even finish this teaching, this is going to be a moment of repentance. This is going to be a moment because what happens at the end, most of the book, is really a conversation between Job and his friends. And it's only until the end where God begins to speak. And God begins to tell Job, Job, what do you know about me? You think you know. Job, you know nothing. Where were you when I put the stars up, when I hung them up in the star in the sky? Where were you, Job? Where were you when I created the oceans? Where were you when I created the wave? You really think you know me, Job? You really think I was the one that went out to destroy your life? You really think that I was the one who took the life of your children? And the Bible says that towards the end of the chapter, Job begins to repent. And Job begins to say this. This is Job 42, verses 5 to 6. He says this, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and I repent in dust and ashes. When his eyes see, he knew God from mental knowledge. But now he, his eyes was opened and he now knows God experientially. God just opened the eyes of his understanding. And I'm just believing even as I am ministering to you right now, that the eyes of your understanding in the name of Jesus will be open. And you will begin to see who really is behind your disaster. You will be able to see who was the one who was behind the breakdown of your family. And you will begin to understand understand that it was not God. It was not God. And one of the tactics or the tools of the enemy is to confuse you. Many believers right now, they are so confused. They do not know who is the one who is actually behind this. The, the start of Job 42, Job says, 
I know that you can do all things and no one can stop you. I want you to prophesy that over your sick body. I want you to even just put your hands on your body and say, Lord, I know that there is nothing impossible to you. When my circumstances become impossible, you specialize in the impossibilities. Job began to repent. Job began to be to sit in dust and ashes because his eyes was open to the God who came to restore. And I am telling you, the Bible says this, which is actually so beautiful. It says, and the Lord restored to Job double. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus right now that God will restore to you double in the name of King Jesus right now as you are believing this message, as you are coming into alignment with this message. The Bible said this, that God was angry with his friends and said to them, you have not spoken the truth about me to my servant Job. And he said to them, you need to go and to come up with this offering um, and Job, my servant, will pray for you and I will accept Job's prayer. And the Bible says that Job actually did do that. And then it says this, it says that when Job did that, God blessed him. It says this, it says, um, this is Job 42 and I'm reading out of verse 10. It says, when Job prayed for his friends, Friends, the Lord restored his fortune. This is a word for someone. If you are hearing this now, or you are going to hear this later, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus that God is going to restore your fortune. It says, in fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. I prophesy to you, if you are receiving this word for your family or for your health, right in the chat. And I want you to read this. God's about to restore. God's about to restore everything that the enemy has illegally stolen, has illegally taken from me. And God never restored the same. God restored twice. And the, the beautiful thing is that the Bible even tells us what God gave him because every gift of God was super precious. It says this in verses 12. So the Lord blessed Job in the second in, um, in the second half of his life, I prophesy to you in the name of King Jesus that the rest of you shall become the best of you. I prophesy to you what the Bible says. It says that the Lord blessed him more in the second half of his life. It says that he gave him 14,000 sheep. Could you imagine? Why would the Bible mention the number? Why would the Bible... What, God, he, the Bible could just say so many sheep, but why would he say 14,000? Because God wants you to know that when God blesses you, this shall be a noticeable blessing. Everyone, his friends, his family, those who despised him could see the 14,000 sheep. This is so much wealth. And he said six thousand camels. I am not sure if you've ever seen a camel, but when I visited Egypt and I saw camels in Egypt and Dubai, one of them is huge. It's massive. It's so scary to even sit on. The Lord gives him 6,000. Could you imagine what the wilderness looked like everywhere you go? And this is actually crazy because at the start of the chapter, what did Satan say to God? He said, you blessed him and his sheep and cattle and camels are all over the land so it was already noticeable but here it's way more noticeable in other words God blessed him with double if he used to have 7,000 sheep he now has 14,000 sheep if he had 3,000 camels he now has 6,000 camels if he used to have 500 oxen he now has 1,000 oxen if he had 1,000 male donkeys 500 he now has 1000 why are these numbers very prophetic why are they so important because god wants to tell somebody i am restoring your health 
I am restoring your fortune. I am restoring to you double. And I want you to take this promise. I want you to believe in this promise. And even as I begin to pray, when, when Job repented, he offered unto God. It wasn't just like, God, I repent. He really repented. And maybe most of your life, you thought that the book of Job was God allowing Satan to torment meant his beloved but if you if this teaching enlightened you opened up your mind to actually see what is behind this and what is happening and if you were to receive that prophetically I want you to take a step of faith and to activate your faith and to go to the website and sow your seed and you're like why why are you saying that because the moment you sow a seed into a prophetic promise it becomes alive it becomes activated it becomes a part of a prophecy that you received personally. So I'm, I'm about to pray, but before I pray for healing, and remember, you're never buying your miracle. God has already healed you in Jesus. What's happening now is an activation of that. But if you have lost finances, if you have lost, if the enemy came hard after your finances, if the enemy came hard after your children, what you are saying is that God, I am believing that if you did this with the job, that if you restored everything double that if you restored his health that if you and that he was so noticeable in the way that you blessed him you're doing it with me you're doing it for me so those that are believing this word and let me tell you every word we share and every teaching we share is different so if you want to do that you can head to the website and the details are scrolling down the bottom but I'm about to pray for everyone who is believing this everyone who's moving in faith and i prophesy to you that double in the name of jesus so let me begin to pray for healing before anything i want you to lay your hands on your sick body and as your healing begins to manifest i want you to write me in the chat because pain will be leaving your body eyes will see ears will hear cancer will disappear the moment i begin to pray i know that god moves he backs up the word with signs and wonders and healings. Why? Why does he do that? For the glory of his name. So whatever you are, it just touch your body. Father, in the name of King Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind the prince of the air. And I thank you because right now, Satan is not the God of this world. You are. I thank you because all authority has been stripped of him on the cross and given to you, Lord Jesus. And so we, as God's children, take authority authority over every demonic spirit of infirmity, every demonic spirit which kept your people bound because they believed in their thinking that it was you which allowed this sickness. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break its power now. I break its power and I release your healing into their bodies that their healing shall manifest in the name of King Jesus, now I rebuke sickness and disease, blindness, cancer, blood disorders, arthritis, migraine. In the name of Jesus, right now, I command those spirits, demonic spirits, to shift and to be uprooted. I speak healing to bones and nervous system. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Someone's getting healed. I hear the Lord saying to me, I'm touching someone with Parkinson's disease right now. I hear the Lord saying to me that I am touching someone right now with chronic pain. There's someone else, you're hearing this, and there's depression in your life. You're, you're already on tablets, and you don't know what to do. The Lord says, I am setting you free right now. May Many of you, I ask that we repent corporately. If you believed that God was the one who allowed or permitted Satan 
let's repent i want you to say father i come to you in the name of jesus and lord i ask in the name of jesus that you would forgive me i repent before you god for believing that it was you who allowed this condition in my life to 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 teach me something and I just ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would forgive me. I wanted to say, I separate myself from this condition. This is not my condition. I give it away. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are believing, those that are praying. I see someone with diabetes. I see someone else. And you've got high blood pressure. And it's because of tension. And the Lord says, I'm touching you, son, right now. I see what you're going through. I hear of your pain right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for emotional pain right now. Father, let your spirit be felt. Here it comes. I activate your healing, God. I activate your healing wherever you are. Here it comes. Reach out your hand and just touch it. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are just receiving right now, receiving the power of the Holy Spirit, I thank you because healing is coming into their bodies right now. I rebuke pain. I rebuke pain in the back. I rebuke pain in the knee area. I rebuke pain on the soles of your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are touching people right now. Yes, I, I want you to just check your body and just test it and let us know in the chat. I know that we always receive emails and messages because God is just touching you. And I am believing for that um, as I'm praying. But I want to pray as well for restored fortune. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything, God, that the enemy stole, Father, in the name of Jesus, if you restored twice to Job, how much will you restore to your children? So, Father, in the name of King Jesus right now, I pray, God, and I ask in the name of Jesus that anything and everything Satan stole shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Children shall be restored. The prodigals shall come back. Finances shall be restored in the name of Jesus, that this is a season of blessing. This is a season of your wonderful work, working in the lives of your children. I thank you, God, because you're a miracle working God and because you are doing something new. And all of God's people said, Amen and amen and amen. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for receiving this teaching. Send it to someone. Share it. Tell someone, this is what I found out about Job. Um, there's going to be, um, if you want to learn more about healing and physical healing, there is a wonderful course. Uh, it's called Physical Healing uh, on our website. So you can find all that on the website. So all you need to do is head to celebratefreedomministries.org. Uh, you can become a partner. You can sign up to the courses, sign up to the healing service that's coming up, or become a monthly partner. There's so much happening and we cannot do what we do without your support in enabling us to evangelize, spread the gospel and equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So we just want to say thank you. We love you. We bless you. I, If this teaching blessed you, send a message, send an email. You can get in contact, um, info at celebratefreedomministries.org and we will reply um, to your messages. But yeah, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for blessing us with your time, with your heart. Have a blessed, blessed night. Bye-bye. Let's build the kingdom of God together. Partner with us and support our projects throughout the Middle East, digging water wells, building orphanages, and conducting revival meetings to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries and join our Kingdom Builders program today. Celebrate Freedom Ministries have been called by God to raise disciples who will make a difference in the kingdom. Disciples who will preach the gospel, heal the sick, and raise the dead. If you desire to be personally discipled, we invite you to join our partners program and begin to fulfill your God-given calling and purpose. To join the partners program, visit our website, Celebrate Freedom Ministries, and join our partners program today. Mina and Yvonne have been called to bring God's transformative love to this generation. 
They have been powerfully used by God to preach the gospel to nations with the manifestations of signs, wonders, and glorious healings. You can be a part of what God is doing. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries. Are you in need of inner healing? Do you need restoration from painful memories, traumas, and hurt? Do you need healing in your body? Join our school to learn aspects of the biblical principles of healing. Walk with a mentor who will guide and support you throughout your journey. Invest in yourself and be free from pain and trauma. Get ready to receive healing and release it to others. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries and register today. Are you in desperate need for God's emotional and physical touch? Do you have a heart for the healing ministry? Revealing the Healer covers it all. In her new book, Yvonne talks about fatal experiences which could have ended her life or left her paralyzed if it wasn't for God's healing power. Written by a passionate believer in Christ who experienced divine healing firsthand, Yvonne doesn't hold back from sharing divine keys to releasing God's healing power. Through her book, Revealing the Healer, Yvonne proves to you that healing is your destiny, both to receive and to release to others. Begin to operate with the biblical understanding of sickness and of healing. Understand the full implication of healing in the atonement at the cross. Learn a simple biblical method for walking in divine healing. Discover the secret behind the healing ministry of Jesus. Find out how to overcome common hindrances preventing you from receiving your healing. Receive an impartation to receive your own healing and be used by God. You can get her book by visiting www.celebratefreedomministries.org.